Um, so welcome everybody to the Con Edison presentation for Stack Your Future Career Week. We're so happy to have Michael Zielinski with us. And um, before I formally introduce him, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping things. Um, we ask that you be sure to mute your microphone. We will be recording this session. Um, and we will ask that you hold your questions to the end, but feel free to put them up in the chat and we will address them at the end. Or at that point, you can unmute your microphone and ask any questions. Um, and so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Michael Zielinski. He's a management associate working in cybersecurity, you said, Michael? Uh, yes, I'm currently in cybersecurity. Uh, good morning, everyone. Nice to meet you. Um, so my name is Mike. I work in Con Ed. Uh, I have some slides, but things are a little iffy right now with Zoom, so I think I'm just going to kind of talk to you guys directly. Um, so essentially, I work for the what's called the management program. Uh, it's a program we have here. Uh, it's about an 18-month program with three rotations where you'd get to kind of see the utility industry. There's three options within it. Uh, we have IT, there's a business track, and then there's also an engineering track, depending on uh, where your interests are. And um, we also have co-op opportunities here. Co-op um, is more on the internship side. That's more of like a part-time, really flexible. Um, it's, it's really, really attractive if you're maybe a freshman or a sophomore uh, or even a junior. Uh, if you're a senior year or a recent graduate, an alumni, um, the LDP, we call it Leadership Development Program, is probably something a little bit um, more exciting to look at. Um, so I guess the, the biggest takeaways and the differences between the two, the co-op internship, you would have like a, a specific focus. So if you're an engineer um, background, if you're an IT background, or if you're a business background, you would kind of focus on that sole work and you get some exposure into what the industry uh, brings to, to the table as far as those uh, majors are concerned. Um, so, for example, I work in cybersecurity, as uh, Maureen mentioned, and so some of the things I do day to day is I, I get some exposure into the current trends in cybersecurity, as I'm sure you guys have seen. Uh, there's just been so much news, uh, especially lately with cyber attacks between the Colonial Pipeline, uh, recently T-Mobile was attacked, um, and the, the reality is bigger corporations such as Con Ed or even bigger like multi um, billion dollar corporations or international corporations. Um, it, this is like a 24 seven operation as far as cybersecurity is concerned. Um, as far as the, so let, let me just explain more. Let me get my slides so I can go over this in a little more, deep, in more detail. So about Con Ed. Um, so we have three major values that we kind of follow and uh, we expect this to extend not just within the company, but to all of our customers and pretty much everybody who interacts with us. And uh, those three things are, uh, first and foremost, we take a huge pride on safety. So we make sure no matter what is going on, the first thing is that everyone remains safe. Um, and that's probably going to be a major focus in most corporations just because, um, you know, nobody wants to get hurt. And then our second um, core value is operational excellence. So, of course, you want to remain safe, but you also need to get the job done. Um, and then our last takeaway is um, uh, customer... Hold on, my brain is just not working with me. Um, we'll just say customer satisfaction. I'll, I'll, I'll have to get back to that because for some reason my brain is just not working. But, um, and, and so the last thing is all, all of our customers, everybody we interact with, all of those people, we want to make sure have a good experience, that they leave with something to take away, that they feel like they're, we're genuinely interested, that we actually care about the people that we work with. And I think that the reason I'm bringing this up isn't, isn't for content specifically. I think these are just good values that everybody should try to think about in the background of their mind. You always want to make sure you're safe. You always want to make sure you can get your job done. And at the very end of it all, the people that you interact with want to have a good experience. Um, and that's it, customer experience. So if you're um, interacting with people, and, and this goes for any job that you that you guys are going to encounter. Try to create a good network. Try to really grasp something from them. Gain some type of genuine interest. Uh, there's that famous expression, if you enjoy your job, you'll never work a day in your life. And, and I really believe in, in those things. And I think you should all take that away too. Um, so back to Con Ed, sorry, I'm off track. 
So, um, so yeah, for the LDP program, it's split up into three rotations. You would do three six month rotations. This would be a full time opportunity where you'd be expected to go out of your comfort zone every once in a while. So you'd start in something that you prefer, right? So if you're a business major, you might start in some type of project management, for example. You would do that for about six months, whether a uh, what we call an individual contributor role. That's where you would have a project that you'd be working on specifically and reporting to some type of supervisor, very traditional. Um, and then we also have supervisory roles. That's when you would come in as a um, an acting supervisor. You'd have a team under you of probably very experienced individuals, some with 30, 40 years experience. And they would kind of guide you in understanding how to be an effective leader, how to grow within the company. And um, the, the most important part is you would start building that network that I, that I was speaking about. You'd start getting exposure to things like engineering, even if you're an IT major. Um, and as you know, Con Ed, or maybe don't know, Con Ed is uh, the utility company for New York City. And so um, when major storm events occur or something, you know, really crazy, like an outage, a power outage in New York City happens, people kind of have to get spread out, sometimes out of their comfort zone. So this program is designed that if you uh, maybe work in IT and there's a huge power outage in Times Square, at least they know that they can rely on you and you have some type of network that, that maybe they could give you some exposure into the engineering side. Or alternatively, maybe you do your six months in engineering, even as an IT major, and you decide, wow, I love engineering. That is completely acceptable because you're going to be very well trained in those things. Um, and then more towards the co-op side, uh, which is the internship opportunities. Uh, again, these are part-time. They're very flexible. Um, we put school first because if you haven't already figured out, that degree is very important. It establishes more than just a piece of paper, like everyone seems to, to suggest. It shows you how to stick with what you're supposed to be doing. It shows commitment. It shows work ethic. Um, of course, we, we do have some requirements. You need at least a 3.0. Um, so, so that's like the bare minimum. Um, and that's just showing us that you're taking it seriously, just like we want you to. It's, um, I think somebody's trying to jump in here. Uh, you're on mute, Maureen. Sorry, I got it. I got him in. Thank you for letting me know. He he must have got disconnected because he was on. Sorry about that. Up again, sorry. No, no problem. Um, okay, so I forgot where I just left off. But um, essentially, so yeah, I think I was talking about the internship. So school is just, it's a very big priority. Even here at Con Ed, it's a really big priority. Um, once you become an employee, if you do become full-time and extend after school finishes, uh, we have incentives where we do packages um, where you could get tuition aid. Uh, it's, th this changes, so don't quote me on this, but it's something along the lines of where you would get 90% uh, of your tuition covered up front, and then you would have the last 10% reimbursed eventually, assuming that your grades stayed where they're supposed to stay. If you're failing or not showing up to class or just being responsible with your education, then Con Edison will retract that offer. But if you're going to school and doing what you're supposed to and doing your homework and making sure that everything gets done uh, timely and your grades are intact, then Con Ed pretty much covers the entire thing. Again, the 10% won't be covered up front. So you'd have to take out some type of loan or something, but it would immediately be reimbursed after you graduate. Uh, so that's a big incentive. Um, in general, we strive, we really, really strive here to, to have everyone who comes in grow. Um, you will come in as a recent college graduate. You'll learn how to be a leader, a manager, a supervisor. You'll learn your own duties if you want to do IT, business, engineering. Um, we even have stuff outside of those ranges, um, not necessarily for the leadership development program, but we have our own medical department for example, we have our, our, an entire law department. I'm, you know, any, any major corporation for the most part is probably going to have a, a very diverse profile of job opportunities. Um, so I think, I, I know I'm, I'm going more into the advice side than the, the recruiting side here, but I think if, if I can give all of you like a major piece of advice is figure out what your genuine interests are. Um, don't be scared. So a lot of you probably don't have too much work experience, right? You're just coming fresh out of school. Don't be scared to put down those interests on your resume. Don't be scared to say, you know, I run a blog 
talk and you want to get into IT, that's completely acceptable. Or if you're very interested in engineering, don't be scared to say, I worked on my house and put together an electric outlet or something, you know, just something related to what it is that shows that you have a genuine interest. It'll go a long way for us. It'll go a long way for you. Um, it'll just show that, that this isn't just all about work. Um, Work-life balance specifically is, is extremely important. Um, but yeah, and then let me just look at this slide if I can get it. So these are the things that we expect from, from the, the candidates that apply. We want them to have a, a thirst for knowledge and insatiable curiosity. We want them to continually seek to link theory to practical application. We want them to exhibit the motivation and initiative to be an agent of change. And we want them to identify their leadership style and continually foster its development. Um, pretty straightforward. And then this is what you can expect from Con Edison. We'll provide you an introduction into changing the world of the energy industry. We have an emphasis of our core values, which I explained before, probably should have looked at this, uh, safety, operational excellence, and customer experience. We will give you the ability to gain practical work experience in several major organizations across the company to gain a comprehensive understanding of our core business and the services we provide to our customers, which is kind of what I was explaining before, where you might start where you want and you will jump around. At the end of the day, you'll have the ability to come back. Um, the purpose isn't to, to sway you out of your interests. It's just to give you a, a broader understanding of, of our company. And the last uh, expectation that you can have is that we will challenge you to learn, grow, and gain leadership qualities throughout the leadership development program. Um, so those are our, some of our biggest expectations. And then these are the requirements. Um, require a GPA of 3.0 or higher. Uh, we have a, we, for the LDP program specifically, not co-ops, uh, we want a graduation date that is coming up either at the end of this year. So I guess May of the end of this or next year, May of next year, um, or as early as January, 2019, we'll still accept into this upcoming cohort. Uh, we, for the Leadership development, again, we want a major in engineering, information technology, or business, and less than three years work experience, which is probably not something you hear very often. And uh, the last two things are a valid driver's license and access to a vehicle. Uh, the reason those are big is because, the, so we're all over New York City, we're in upstate New Jersey, we are in Pennsylvania. Um, there's just a lot of places and not all of those places have direct access to public transportation. Um, as far as the co-op, uh, somebody else, I'll just let them. As far as the co-op is concerned, um, there's a lot more opportunities. They're usually still based around those three majors, um, but I, I have links for all of this stuff too that I can provide um, that anybody can look into at any point and kind of keep track of. It, it updates pretty regularly every couple of days or so. And so if you see an opportunity pop up that gauges your interest, or I, I can also give you my contact information, um, we could definitely have an open dialogue about some of these. So let me, can I use the chat? Is that okay? Okay. Yes, sorry. Okay, oh, and so um, Michael, don't worry about the participants coming in. I have two students monitoring that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So there's two links going into the chat. The first one is the leadership development program that I was speaking of. And the second one is our co-ops, which is essentially uh, internships. Um, the co-op link has all of the different options. I just had it up here. So there's analyst aid, computer aid, engineering aid. Um, analyst is pretty broad, but I will say it usually goes along with cybersecurity. Um, but we also have analysts in our financial part of the industry. Um, yeah, let me pull that up so I can go into detail. Yeah, I actually noticed that you had, um, they mentioned marketing majors, management majors, finance, econ, math, accounting for Correct. that analyst aid. So yes. that, that's interesting for, cause we have a lot of those majors here. Okay. I see. Okay. So perfect. So um, again, I'm on the cybersecurity side, but I do have some background knowledge and, and a lot of, um, contacts if, it, if we need to, but, um, as far as the analyst concerned, there's, so we have an entire finance side. Um, we have everything from economists, um, you know, believe it or not, just to like give you an idea of how diverse everything is. We have our own 
one in-house meteorologist keeping track of the weather um, every day. There's, it's really like an entire city of, of different workers going on in Con Ed. Um, so from a finance major point of view, we definitely have people keeping track of our stocks. We, we make sure that we have a fair return for all of our shareholders. Um, we do a lot of reinvesting with all of our stocks, stuff like that, to, to make sure that um, people that are investing into us, that we're able to give back. So there's entire teams of, of economists and, and finance majors specifically that are, are kind of keeping track of all of our numbers. And then from the other side of that, we also, you know, uh, there's always going to be budgets. We're always keeping track of budgets. We have two types of budgets. There's capital and O&M. Capital is when you have some type of new project. Um, so we have teams of, of people in finance keeping track of stuff like that, where you would um, essentially look at how much money we are able to spend and how much money uh, goes into some of these projects and just kind of making all, sure all of those numbers add up. Um, what else? What else? There's a lot with finance. So we also just have finance in our supply chain. So we have supply chain. That's where you, you know, maybe order supplies to make it like really, really simple. Um, so all of that stuff has books and records and definitely has their own project management department going back to that. So we have project management. Um, they're essentially also keeping track of budgets and stuff like that, but it's more on like a local scope. So say you work for a business team that does customer interaction. Their, their job is to call customers, make sure everybody's having a good experience. Behind the scenes is going to be an entire project management team that says, hey, these are our projects for the year. These are our goals. These are our, some of the things that we have money for. Um, and then oddly enough, you'd be surprised to probably learn that if say you had a, a, a huge budget um, that you wanted to accomplish something with, um, if you came in over budget, obviously that's an issue. But the other issue is sometimes it's not okay to come in under budget, for example. So these are the types of things they balance. Um, it's not to say that anybody wants to waste money. Um, it's just to say that we have a specific budget for a specific reason. If we're not utilizing all of that, then the question becomes, what are we missing, for example? Uh, so those are some of the things that go into the economics point of view. Um, and then, of course, there's trends. Um, that's probably a lot of stuff you guys do in school where you, you really keep track of trends and make sure the market is responding appropriately. You know, I mean, we're in like one of the craziest couple of years, I'm sure you hear this in every meeting at this point with COVID going on and all of these world events, uh, these hurricanes coming left and right. Um, so, you know, stuff like budgeting and finance, it gets really tricky right now. Um, we have a whole different dynamic now where people are working remote, for example, and it completely changes how our finances look. So we have expanding teams of individuals that are just dedicating time to make sure that all of these numbers are able to keep track with all of the current trends in the world um, that go on around you. If you're not already doing I, for, for finance majors, I would highly recommend just understand that the world events, especially locally to New York City um, and surrounding areas, play a huge role in the economics with the companies that are there. Um, small businesses probably have it even in even more wild because I'm sure they have to crunch numbers on a completely different scale. Um, but Con Ed is, you know, multi-million dollar budgets um, that are just being completely changed over the last few years. Um, but yes, to make it more simply, so we have opportunities in, in these fields for sure. There's such a portfolio of different finance opportunities that you can apply to, whether it be co-op positions or uh, in the LDP program specifically. Um, it's really interesting because one of like the biggest projects I have going on on this year is to do a presentation on the finance side of things. And that's not my background. So it just goes to show you how important this stuff is that that even if it's not necessarily your job, it's important to know. So you guys will all be just so ahead of the game in any in anywhere you go. You'll, you'll be slightly benefited just by knowing the financial aspect of what's going on there. Um, but yeah, and then let me just check these slides, but that, that should be pretty much it. I think, I think there's about eight minutes left, so it should work nicely. Yeah. Um, if anybody no, has any questions, comments? Yeah. Sorry. Nothing so far, but, um, I mean, we're recording this too, because a lot of students have class conflicts and wanted the recording, but, um, for our marketing majors, um, that they would apply for the co-op analyst aid if they're a current student. What 
are, is there opportunity for them to do something in the marketing area of Con Ed or does everybody kind of do the same thing as that analyst position? Like, do they specialize in the area that the student is majoring in? Good question. So there is a lot more. I know they've kind of umbrellaed analyst as like the business side, um, but we do have entire marketing teams as well. Um, I mean, so you see Con Edison's logo all over the place. If you go into New York City, these are all things that are taken care of by marketing teams. Um, if, if you see billboards, I mean, think about it almost like any other company, really, if we still have an obligation to make sure that people know who we are, that they trust us, um, you know, we, we have to give exposure to our customers and be as transparent as possible. And what comes along with that is an entire marketing part of our organization. Um, so I guess I don't know the fine details of the marketing department just because I don't specifically work over there, but I can assure you that we have teams that are working with social media. We have just, um, you know, like the traditional things. We have uh, teams that are working on our website to make sure that everything is interactable. We have teams that are working with um, sending out information in the mail that make sure all of that lines up and looks appropriate. Um, I don't know, are you, are you hoping for more of like the, when you say marketing, like advertising or? I think, I guess I just wanted to understand um, on behalf of any of the marketing majors that are gonna be interested in this, are they going to, so if they did the co-op analyst role, are they going to have an opportunity to get involved in marketing or is it more the analyst role, just everybody kind of does the same things. It's just business general things that they're involved in and not, not that they would necessarily gain experience in marketing through that role. So, okay, I see. Um, so I, I guess I would say both. Um, we have opportunities that would be from marketing that would branch out. Um, that is to say, you might be involved in marketing for some amount of months that would be related to a specific role, like you're saying, um, you know, whether it be our utility side or IT or what have you. Um, but we also have marketing specific departments, um, like we have a marketing department. Um, that focuses on the public and um, isn't necessarily, how do I explain this? They're, they're not necessarily working, you know, with electricity or gas or steam. They're, they're working on marketing. You would get direct experience in the marketing industry um, through Con Edison, obviously. Okay. Hopefully that. Um, I did also, while we're waiting, because I don't see anything in the chat, um, but I did want to to get some clarification. I thought that sounded like an amazing benefit, the tuition aid. So just so I'm clear and any students watching this or participating now, you said if you participate in the co-op program, after that you're done with the co-op program, they provide 90% tuition, you believe, that was the last you heard, and then you upfront, and then you cover 10%, but later could be reimbursed. Is that that starts or kicks in for the semester following, or do they backtrack and say, hey, you're a junior, we'll, we'll reimburse you now for your freshman sophomore year, and now you pay 10% of your junior year tuition. It, like, when does it kick in? Where does it start from? Do you know, you might not know the answer to that, but just so I have a better understanding and any students listening to this, um, because that's an amazing benefit. Sure, yes. Um, so let me just backtrack to um, for co-ops, they would be part-time. Uh, we don't do the tuition tuition aid for part-time. It would be specific to either the LDP program or any other full-time opportunity that we provide. Um, as far as backtracking, we also, it would not backtrack. It would be after employment would start. Um, but after employment starts, there's so I mean like there's some paperwork that has to be filled out because it's a lot of finances and stuff like that but um essentially it would start immediately when you started school after the fact okay so it sounds almost like it would be more for a master's level student who has who doesn't have class conflicts during the day 
Um, I know our master's program, we have Friday night and Saturday day classes. So they could in a sense work full time. Um, does that sound like it probably is more likely a master's level tuition reimbursement? So, yeah, I mean, so you could use it for any degree, hypothetically. Um, the scenario you're describing is 100% acceptable. Um, most people use it for graduate level degrees. Um, that's probably sounds really good too, especially for undergrads here. But um, in general, if somebody came into the company without a degree, they would still be able to utilize this benefit as long as they were full-time within the company. Um, in terms of the scheduling scenario, um, you know, it's, it's really on a case by case basis. Probably ideally it would be some type of night or weekend classes, um, but that's not to say that that's every case. We have some people that work nights, for example, so maybe it would be better for them to do a morning schedule or something. Um, but yes, and then as far as that is concerned, um, assuming that you were some type of full-time within the company, they would cover 90% and then the last 10% would be reimbursed, assuming that you're doing well in school. Yeah, that's an amazing benefit. Um, that's a, a real big deal. Um, Okay, so yeah, and in, in looking and um, at everything that you discussed, I think our students would probably be looking for the computer aid or the analyst aid. We do have some engineering majors here, so um, there is potential there, but um, that LDP program sounds great for the recent college grad, and from what I was reading, it sounded like up to two years after you graduate, you qualify for that rotational program. Um, Okay. And then the other thing is I noticed ONR is a subsidiary of Con Ed as of uh, 99, which Con Ed, I think a lot of our students might be familiar with. We do have um, many of our students from the Rockland County area. So um, it's something I just wanted to mention, um, familiarity purposes for our students. Um, but you're, in terms of these opportunities, they are directly working for Con Ed. You don't collaborate with ONR and have them um, hire students for these same roles, correct? So, no. So, okay. um, they're our subsidiary, like you mentioned. I've actually done some projects over there in the Spring Valley area, uh, like near Nanuet, if anyone's familiar with that area. Mm -hmm. And, um, Essentially, as our subsidiary, there are some lines. Um, so we're federally regulated because we're the utility. You can almost think about it like this, um, without like sounding too ridiculous. Uh, you don't necessarily get to choose your utility. It kind of just is there. It's almost like some type of legalized monopoly to an extent. So we're highly regulized, reg regulated, and um, you know, on a federal level, they just want to make sure that we're not doing anything we're not supposed to. And to be honest, we're one hundred percent on par with that. We want to make sure we're not doing anything we're not supposed. to to. Um, but with that, so we still collaborate with ONR and the lines do not cross with these programs. So you can um, essentially, if, if that's your area, you can apply and th there's even a website actually, let me, it's very similar. Um, but the gold program does extend over there as well as uh, internship opportunities. So let me get that link for you. That's awesome. And while you're looking for that, um... I just wanted to throw it out in case any questions. Right now we have nothing in the chat, so I'm thinking the students are okay. Um, those links you provided were awesome. And that'll be great um, for us, for any students who are gonna be watching this afterwards. Yes, good, I'm glad I can help. Um, I can also, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat as well if anybody wanted to email me, maybe they don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. talking here. Um, that's completely okay. Let's see. That's great, Michael. Um, and so while you're looking for those links, I did um, just wanna say thank you so much for this presentation today. Um, we are uh, just a little past 1030. So after you get that link up, we will probably wrap up, but um, this was a great presentation. Really great to hear about these opportunities. I think there's a lot there that our students might be interested in, um, as well as the recent grads. So um, I too will keep this in mind going forward. Um, and it, so you would be the best to contact just in general, but 
more specifically for students who are interested in cybersecurity? Or can they, should they reach out to you for anything, the Annals Aid? So they can reach out to me for anything. Uh, we have an HR department as well, and I could easily redirect them. Um, okay. But I, I will say this, I'm very, so, Oh, if I haven't already made it clear, I'm extremely happy to help anybody with an, a, a serious interest to, to burst into these markets, to burst into these jobs. This isn't even just specific to Con Ed. If you guys want to get in touch with me, send me your resumes. I can look them over. If you have questions about here or somewhere else, I'm, I'm happy to help. If you have any questions about maybe interviewing, I'm, I'm very open to all of these things. Um, the reality is, especially when you're coming out of school, sometimes it can be very intimidating, a little overwhelming. Um, obviously school is an extremely important stepping stone, um, but I'm, I'm just always willing to help anybody after that or during for that matter. So please, with anything, reach out um, internally or externally. Uh, and there's the link for the Orange and Rockland. Thank you very much. That's great. So um, without uh, anything further and no questions in the chat, I'm going to thank you so much, Michael, for this presentation. And hopefully we'll stay in touch. And um, you know, I will encourage the students to reach out to you if they have specific questions. Sure, sounds good. Thank you so much, Maria. Thanks. Here okay, enjoy the rest time. of your week. You too. Take okay. care. Okay. Bye bye.